afternoon, everybody. My name is Daniel Parent, and I'm the System Maniac. So today we're going to talk about uh, another part uh, of the system that I posted about two weeks ago about the 90 degrees uh, banking. Um, I believe last time we talked about kicking. We talked about two rails, three rails, four rails, five rails, just in kicking. And so now we're going to talk about uh, banking. And let me start out by saying that uh, most of you probably don't know this, but banking and kicking are not equal. And what I mean by that is most people think that if you find the right line and you shoot the uh, cue ball the same way, that you're going to bank the same way that you're going to kick. And that's just not the case. Let me explain. So let's start with a straight end bank. Okay. Again, most people think that if you find the line um, and use the same English, that, uh, that the kick is going to do the same thing as the bank and vice versa. And that's not the case. So let's take this one row bank, for example. You're shooting this with just a center, a center ball, a little bit, a touch of high. Um, and I know this table needs a little bit of spin, so I'm going to put an eighth tip of uh, right spin on it, just to make sure I'm not shooting it with uh, opposite English. So just a rolling cue ball. There you go. Okay, but what happens if I hit a little bit firm, a little bit harder than that? Same line, okay, just a little harder, same spin. Actually, I'm going to do it with no spin, and I'm going to shoot at the same speed. Okay, center ball. You see how it shortens up? And if I hit it harder than that, same. I'm actually going to use the same spin that I used before, uh, the first shot, about a Eighth tip of right spin. But you see how much it shortens up. So we have to take into consideration all the different factors that are going to limit, inhibit, or help um, our object ball to travel the direction it needs to go. So let's start with a two rail. Now, a two-row bank and a two-row kick are pretty standard uh, banks in pool. Um, you use it in pretty much every game, eight ball, nine ball, a lot in one pocket, and things like that. So, um, so it's good to know how to do these the right way since they're going to come up so often. But they're also one of the most fickle banks. And I'll explain that in a later video, but they just don't react like they're supposed to most of the time because there's so much emphasis on what happens off the first rail. Um, that determines what happens off the second row. And let me give you an example. So this is a straight in bank. It's a 45 degree bank. And if you don't know where I'm getting my angles uh, from, you need to go back and watch the 90 degrees uh, banking video, Introduction to Kicking, uh, which is one that I posted about two weeks ago. And then come and watch this, otherwise you're going to be lost. And I'm not backtracking. Uh, not very much anyways. Okay, so this is a straight in uh, kick shot, uh, going two rows to the one ball. Again, we have 90 degrees here. A two rails is 90 degrees divided by two rails, uh, which puts you at 45 degrees. And this is 45 degrees. That's the angle going to the rail. So also, this line to this line is 45. This line to this line is 45, which is where we're going to start. Okay, so since I know that my table likes an eighth tip of spin, I'm going to start it out um, with a high and just an eighth tip of spin uh, to hopefully get around this corner. Okay. This is just on a kick shot. So I'm going to aim right at the diamond. High with just a touch of left spin. Perfect. Okay, now if we take the same line and we bank a ball, and we use the same spin on the cue ball, the same track line though, and the same spin on the cue ball, we're going to notice a very different result. Okay, I'm going to go top with just a touch of left spin, shooting straight at that same spot. Okay, and the same speed. And we're short. So this is where the problem starts. What we need to do is figure out how to mimic this, uh, this cue ball spin onto the object ball. And we're going to do that using what's called the gear effect. The gear effect means that when two balls touch and they're going, they're going to spin opposite directions. And so what, whatever we do, whatever spin we put on the ball, it's going to do the exact opposite. Um, 
And to really showcase that, we use these strike balls. So whatever this ball is doing, the other ball wants to do the exact opposite. Again, if I do this, it wants to do the exact opposite. You see? Okay. So what we need to do is transfer that top with just a touch of right, uh, touch of right spin to the object's ball from the cue ball. And so how we're going to do that is we're going to do the exact opposite on the cue ball. Um, and of course, speed can be a variance as well. So we'll try to get the speed correct as well. Um, so we need top with just a, a eighth tip of right spin on the cube or on the object ball, on the one ball. So we're going to put bottom with just a touch of right spin. Um, sorry, we need top left on the one ball. So we're going to put bottom right on the cue ball. Shoot to the exact same line. Try to get the exact same speed. And really focus on getting through the ball. Okay, good positive connection. Okay, I hit that a little far, but I felt it. We'll try it again. Like I said, speed plays a factor as well. Bottom right, same line, positive connection, smooth through the ball. Perfect. So this is what you're going to run into when you're trying to bank and kick balls. You need to be able to predict what needs to happen to the object ball off that rail. So the best way to practice this is to just set up some straight in uh, kick shots. Um, you can do them just, you know, just like this, line them up, and just practice kicking them to get a feel for what your table needs. Now some of you may need no spin, um, but if you're going to error, I would say error to inside spin, which in this case is top left, um, just to make sure that you're not hitting uh, you know, top right, which is going to make it react totally different. And I'll show you. I'm just going to go just a touch of right spin on this ball. Okay. Um, and it can get even worse if you hit it with more spin. So make sure that you error to the correct side. I'm going to hit this with a lot of right spin. Okay, so you get the idea. Again, transfer whatever spin you need to the object ball using the gear effect and just predicting what needs to happen. If you put bottom right on this ball, it becomes top left on this ball. If you put uh, bottom left on this ball, it becomes top right on this ball. If you put top on the cue ball, it's going to temporarily, if it still has top when it gets there, it's going to temporarily put bottom on the object ball. So my suggestion is to just set up a couple of training donuts um, so you have a steady control, um, controlled bank or kick, and just experiment with those, put different spin on each one, and try to figure out um, how to mimic what you need your table to be doing. So of course you would start that with just a kick shot. Um, if you're trying to come here, just start with your kick shot. Um, and try to figure out what spin and speed is going to give you a constant result. Oops. And that's going to be the basis for what you're trying to do with the cue ball. Sorry, with the with the cue ball and the object ball connection. Okay. So again, the top left on that ball. So I'm going to put bottom right on the cue ball and start there. Try to keep the same speed and a good positive connection. And you're going to do that with all of your banks and kicks. So let's go through um, the three row. We're going to do the same thing. Figure out what it needs to get to the uh, pocket with just a kick shot. And then we'll predict that um, and try to correct that with a um, with a gear effect. So again, if you watch my uh, 9 degrees kicking uh, system, you'll see that uh, a three rail is 30 degrees, and that is the line from the middle of the pocket 
uh, to about here on this table. I mean, on any table, but that's where it likes to go here. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to shoot it with no spin to start. And if I'm going to err, I'm going to err just a little bit to running English, which is top right in this case. And now again, let's try to replicate that or duplicate that, um, shooting the ball into, shooting the cue ball into it. Okay, just keep practicing that one. Let's go to the four railer. My four railer is uh, 22 and a half degrees. That's going to be from this side pocket to the second diamond here. And of course, if we shoot into this, we're going to run right into the uh, side pocket. So we're going to just move it over. We're going to go to here. Okay. No spin. Now, you'll notice that after about two rails, sorry, after about three rails, you have a basically self-correcting angle, so we're going to use no spin and just rely on speed. Perfect. All right, we're going to try the same shot in reverse with uh, a kick shot. Sorry, a bake shot. Take this line, transfer it over. Since I use no spin and just a touch of high, I'm just going to put a little bit of bottom on this ball. Perfect. And the five rail. The five rail is 18 degrees, which is from middle diamond to second diamond here, right on that line. And again, the same thing in reverse. All right, there you have it. So anyways, I appreciate everybody watching. Um, I know this is kind of rush and kind of quick. Um, I want to cover everything. I promise I do, uh, but I'll have to get into those in, two, in, in later videos. Uh, so my next video I want to work on is going to be talking about the two rails, the ins and outs, and the why it's not working, because I'm sure some of you have watched this and tried it, and you're like, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, it does work, but it's there's a reason I call it the plus system, which I have not got into yet. I will cover that in the next video. Um, and tackle this fickle two rail uh, kick and bank shot. Um, so until then, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Please go watch the previous videos to kind of get you caught up to speed. Um, and I will be releasing at least one more video this, uh, this coming week, uh, possibly two. So stay tuned and I appreciate it. Thank you.